Okay, great. So we are uh, we're a little over halfway through. Got the rest of this week and next week. Um, just seeing a lot of growth, right? I think you know the big thing coming into this off season was about developing our identity as an offense um, and really trying to start that from inside out. Right? Every, everything's got to start from inside out, from the offensive line out to the perimeter. Um, and we want to be known as a physical football team that's explosive on the perimeter. And I, I think as you as as we watch throughout spring practice, a lot of those things have been showing up. Um, getting a little more multiple in the run game uh, co compared to maybe how we were the last couple seasons, right, with uh, just some different personnel. Um, and I think our guys have really taken to it and been paying attention and trying to continue to get better and better and better, and I think we've seen the improvement. The big thing now for the next couple weeks will, will really be about our focus and attention to detail and kind of finalizing a little bit of who we are from a consistency standpoint, play to play, um, and what we want to be known, you know, what we want to be known for, uh, just as we head into the uh, into this next little piece of the off season. But I'm excited about where we're all, where we are. I think, man, there's just been some guys. We have we have some really good leadership um, from some of our older guys. I mean, you look at uh, at Will and Emery, but really it goes across the across the O line. I think, um, you know, Delhi and Miles right now have been playing their best football, and uh, DJ really has. I think taking on the, the vocal piece of center, um, which has been really nice to see. But got some younger guys, too, who are challenging those guys. Um, and then on the perimeter, you know, Kyron and Chris, just their familiarity with, with what we do kind of have led the way, um, especially from a just setting the tempo standpoint, uh, those guys in Mason. But, but again, a lot of the different pieces that we've added or some of the younger guys um, ha have done a really nice job. And then, you know, in the backfield, J Josh Williams is just such a, such a pro. Um, he's a pro in everything that he does. Uh, his consistency and stability. Obviously, we got some other young dynamic players um, as well. But but I think his consistency and stability just brings something to uh, to our offense. And and you see, that's what we need. We need we need our guys who are older and have played a lot of football. We need them to play their best football. Um, and I like how they've approached the spring, right? And then uh, and then Nuss in his uh, in his new role and and how he's taking it, um, kind of taking it head on. Um, so, so many good things to talk about. Definitely need to make some improvements, right? We're not where we need to be, uh, but we're definitely not where we were. So, uh, a lot of good things up to this point. Uh, yeah, hey, Joe, Glenn West, go 247. Just, can you maybe just talk us through the relationship you have with Cortez and just how you guys have coordinated um, in, in dividing up those duties? Yeah, I think, well, I think we have an unbelievable offensive staff. Um, and, and Cortez... You know, everybody sees his development uh, at the receiver position um, with the way last year, you know, obviously that uh, Malik and BT played and right and, and how now they're going to go on and obviously be first round draft picks and, and kind of what they did from a development standpoint, as well as Kyron and, and Chris and, and, the, and the growth that those guys have had. I think what people don't see is um, his ability to game plan, his ability to understand how to attack defenses in the passing game. Um, and, and he was doing a ton of that last year. You know, that, that's, that's, not, that's not anything new. Um, and I think then where, you know, just with, with our new roles and, and his growth and just tying back in as well more into the run game perimeter game, whether it be from an RPO standpoint or whatever that might be, um, and just his involvement there. We, we have an awesome working relationship. I knew Tez when he first got done playing in the uh, UFL, not this UFL, the old UFL, all right, and he came over. I was a GA at South Florida, and he came over. And he and I met. Um, he was he was trying to start to get into coaching. He and I met. We stayed in touch for a long time. Almost worked together a, a couple other times, and just our relationship together, I think, is a really good working relationship. We keep each other um, keep each other centered, right, and and play off each other really well. But there's a ton of respect there, um, and I couldn't be more excited about just uh, how things have gone up to this point, but but how things have gone over the last couple years um, with with our ability to work together. Hey, Coach, John Eads with WAFB. You guys bring in Slade Nagel as the tight ends and special teams coach, and he was an OC for a long time at Tulane. What does he bring to the table for you guys? You know, I think, it, and Coach Kelly talked about this first when, um, when he made the decision to, uh, to hire myself and, and, and Cortez and just in our elevator roles, and talked about just really when we wanted to add a tight end coach in terms of somebody who had call plays before, somebody who understood how we put – uh, all the things together from an offensive standpoint. I think what Slade did at Tulane for the last couple years uh, speaks for itself. I mean, they went to the Cotton Bowl, beat USC, right, and, and do it, did it run in the football, did it a lot of different ways. Um, and I think 
he brings a ton of value um, to what we're doing and how we're trying to expand our offense um, and do, do some different things and a variety of things, I think, that match our, our current personnel and the personnel we'll, you know, we'll have in the future, right? That's what we always want to do. Uh, but his ability to do that, he's been a football coach a long, long time. Um, I've known him, shoot, uh, since I first got in the state, um, he was at McNeese. I was at Louisiana Tech, and we were both recruiting down here and, and been uh, friends a long time. The relationship that we have, the honesty that we can have back and forth, um, and that he can have amongst our staff, right, with he and Cortez and myself and, and really everybody in the room. Uh, but he th brings a huge value from a, I think, a development standpoint of the tight ends and just his coaching ability. But, but on top of that, his ability to help in terms of formate things and make sure we're attacking people the right way, especially when it comes to the run game. Hey, Joe Wilson, I was here with The Advocate. More specifically on those tight ends, was the bowl game in some ways maybe a preview of how you're going to use them in terms of their usage? And, um, you know, moving forward, what, just in general, what do you want to use the tight ends in this offense? Yeah, I think, well, Mason Taylor is one of our best football players. Um, he's, a, he's an excellent football player. People know him, right? Uh, LSU fans know him uh, for the last two years. And just his consistency and his ability to make plays. Um, and I think we want to find ways to get him the ball. And I think you could see Nuss – uh, working, working his way or, you know, it, obviously we're going to go where the read takes us, uh, but putting him in positions where he potentially is the first, second or, or third read where the ball maybe will find him a, a, a little bit more. Um, but I think, you know, just from a consistency standpoint and uh, an experience standpoint, he obviously brings a ton. Um, and I think he's one of the best tight ends in the country. And we want to definitely want to utilize him that way. But I think our other young tight ends, uh, when you look at, at, Pimp and, and uh, Mac Markway, just how they've grown and how we're trying to grow the offense and use those guys more multiple. You know, when we first got here, um, that was a room that really had to be rebuilt. And Coach Kelly and Coach Dembrock started that. And obviously they have a huge, you know, Coach Kelly has a huge history with, with tight ends um, and what he's done with them over several years. But we wanted to grow that room. And I think we're close, right? We're close to getting there. Um, and if, you know, when you guys had an opportunity to be out at practice a little bit, I think you can see um, just how we want to use those guys a little bit more, just within the framework of what we do on offense. Um, beyond Kyron and I know Chris kind of. What's your name? Show, do we start with that? Shay Dixon with on three. I got him, Brandon. Sorry. Uh, beyond Kyron, and, and I know Chris has had, been healthy, uh, but out of these newcomers, uh, CJ and um, uh, Xavier Thomas, uh, look so far. No, I think uh, one, CJ just brings, he, he's, he's such a level of consistency. You can see the experience and how he plays. He's an extremely smart player, um, and he's physical, and he is strong through the catch. Um, I, I think he's going to be a huge piece for what we're doing in the fall and, and putting him in different positions where he can use his strengths um, so that we can attack this conference, right? And, and I think when you look at, obviously, right, we spoke about the returners a little bit, but CJ, the, the level of leadership that he's brought to the room and, and consistent work habits, um, it, it's just been, it's been really good to see. And, and the, the challenging thing for him is he's learning, right? Some of these other guys who have been here, they know, right, they've, they've run these plays multiple times. He's learning. So every day out there, um, he's learning and he's getting better. And as, as we've watched through spring, um, just our ability to say, hey, we need a big catch. We can go his way. Um, and he continues to produce. Um, but I'm excited about what he brings, probably even more from a toughness standpoint, a leadership standpoint, and a consistency standpoint. Because um, that's something that's, that's critical. And that's if you want to win championships, Right, your your guys have to play that way, um, and he brings that level to us. So I, I can't wait to watch him this fall. But it's been fun to watch his growth within the offense, um, and I think he'll hate, have even a bigger August camp. You know, just as we finish out, it'll be fun to watch him these next two weeks. Uh, Zavion's explosive. I mean, you know, earlier in camp we we hand him a jet sweep, right, and he's able to just you can just see he has such a just a feel for for space and holes. He's made some really big plays down the field. He's 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 got a lot of speed. Um, but I think ultimately, right, trying to get him the ball in space and maybe create, create punt returns on offense, right? We want to create punt returns on offense. And we'll have the ability to do that with him and, and as well with Aaron. I think Aaron's played a, a, a really good football as well, um, you know, and Kyle Parker, different guys who have the ability to maybe work small areas. Um, but Xavier's been a, a, just a, a treat to have here. And, again, I speak to his level of toughness. Um, and I think that's been what's probably been the most exciting for our offensive staff and those two guys walking in. They're both tough football players. Right? They're tough football players, and that's going to matter for us in the fall.
Hey, Coach, Jared Paul Joseph for WGNO in New Orleans. You talked about the changes that are on the offense. I mean, one of the mainstays is having most of your offensive line back. Yeah. Firstly, how much does that help with the transition at quarterback? And then secondly, your thoughts about being a physical football team, how much will be finding a bell cow, one man feature back be implemented into this offense? Well, I think, you know, I think, I think everything, right? I, I started out by saying everything starts inside, right? And we're going to build from inside out. So especially when all of a sudden Nuss is coming in and, and hasn't started his, you know, a bunch of games in the past. Um, I think to have that consistency up front, right, so he can have that level of trust and just how those guys are playing, um, you know, obviously led by uh, Will and Emery and just how they show up every single day, it speaks volumes. And it's, it's I, I don't know that I could overstate um, what that means for a quarterback um, and what that means for our run game. Uh, from, from the running back standpoint, I think you're going to see a few guys touch the ball. You know, we're going to we're going to attack people. We're going to come off the football, and we're going to re reestablish the line of scrimmage. Um, with Brad Davis, his mentality, he starts with the leadership and how he sets the tempo in the room. But really, you watch um, as he's been with these guys a couple years, you start to see it be player led. Um, and that's what we want to do. We want to establish a new line of scrimmage. We want to attack people so that they have to fit the box. And then after that, we can let our skill players go do something special on the perimeter when they get the matchups. Bryce Kuhn, 24 7 Sports. Coach. You mentioned DJ, and we talked with him, I guess, a couple of weeks ago just about his leadership and growth. What have you seen just qualities and uh, just his willingness to learn from the veteran guys around him? Center is a hard job, is a hard job to do, right? Every, every play, you got to talk, you got to communicate, you got to get everybody on the same page. Then you got to snap the ball, then you got to block, right? Um, and I think just how he, is, as a second year player, um, has been able to go out and communicate effectively, consistently. Um, and then the physicality he's still able to play with, right? Even as much thinking as he may be doing, um, playing with the physicality. And I think, you know, that, that's what's been really interesting to watch. And he has four returning starters around him, right? And he's a second-year player. And his ability to step in the huddle and, and, and communicate and take charge um, has been really good to see. I think he has a lot of the traits and qualities we want this program to be about that Coach Kelly built this program on um, moving forward. And... You know, that's, that's something I think already is showing at his young age and I think will continue to show, and he'll be a great leader for LSU uh, for, for the several years to come. Coach, are there some things that you are going to stick um, with this offense that you learned from Coach Denbrock this past year, some aspects and uh, things that made the offense so good? Yeah, I think the nuts and bolts of what we do um, <clears throat> and the foundation of what we do was set here over the last – couple years, right, um, when, when Coach Denbrock came in and, and we put this offense into, uh, into, uh, into effect, right, and, and what we've done as an offensive staff, we have four of us uh, that, are, that are still here, right, and myself, Coach Hankton, uh, Brad Davis, and Frank Wilson, and, you know, so a lot of that carryover, plus we have a lot of guys who played, played in, in our offense the last two years, so we want, to keep, we want to keep the building blocks of who we are, but no matter, right, no matter who's talking to you at this podium, you've got to build your offense around the personnel that you have. Um, and I think we, you know, we're doing that, right? We're growing. And just like we did uh, two years ago going into this past year um, and making an evaluation of where we're at and what we needed to do, we, we're, we've sitting down as an offensive staff and we're continuing to do the same thing. What do we need to be moving forward, right? And, and as well with uh, coming from Coach Kelly, what do we need to do moving forward to win championships and be, the, be a championship level offense? Um, so again, absolutely, the foundation is, has definitely been laid right and then there's growth as to uh based on the personnel that we have and and making sure we can attack people in the absolute best way so we can go win championships uh you've been working with garrett now for a couple of years just um what, what is what was the emphasis i guess coming into this off season this spring about just where he needed to go and just how, how have you seen him develop uh now that he's getting some of these uh first team reps yeah no i think with uh with nuss and, and even rewinding back a couple years ago, uh, everything's been about a do your job mentality, right? Obviously, um, anyone who has had the opportunity to watch Garrett play, he's, he's got a ton of arm talent, he has unbelievable vision, um, and he can deliver the ball in a lot of different ways quickly. Um, his big thing has been uh, playing within the structure of the offense and understanding when to take, when to take uh, maybe challenge a throw, right, and when not to. Um, and that's been, the big, that's been the big emphasis, right, is is making sure just from a do your job mentality and having tight feet. When Garrett has tight feet and he has his feet underneath of him, he makes really good decisions. Um, and and so it really is a technique thing, which is in his control. So we just try to keep keep him focused on that. I've been really really pleased this spring with how he's done that. But then also um, 
taking over the leadership role. I, th I think, you know, you watched and I, and, and I read, uh, I think, Mason Taylor's comment uh, a couple weeks ago, which was, which was really cool to see. You know, just when, when all of a sudden Garrett got his opportunity in the bowl game, you could see him step into that role and, and the relationships that he had built over time, the work that he had put in. Um, guys respect that. They respect, they respect work, right? They respect work. Uh, and they respect if they know you care, right, about your teammates. And they respect guys who are going to go out and do their job to the absolute best of their ability. Um, and I think that's how Garrett's uh, stepped in and, and maybe taking advantage of his, of his new role. So it's been, it's been really good to watch. But I think his vocal leadership has really grown. Um, but I think he's playing within himself. Um, so it'll, it'll be fun. We've got a lot of work to do between now and August, uh, but, but a lot of really good things so far. Uh, Jack Schemmel with WBRZ. Um, speaking about the quarterbacks, what tangible improvements have you seen from the rest of the group? You know, watching, and, and I told Ricky this over the last probably four practices, um, again, just going back to some technique things, he's really getting to his backside, and when he gets to his backside, he's in rhythm, and when he's in rhythm, he does some really good things. Um, really playing quarterback, right? He's, he's just starting to manage the game, uh, manage the play, go where the ball's supposed to go, where the, you know what I mean, where the defense tells us it's supposed to go, delivering it on time, and just seeing a lot of growth in that standpoint, as well as he is, he's a passionate guy, um, and, and that's something that we love about him and making sure that he keeps that passion to where the guys will follow him. And I think just his growth and maturity um, and experience within the offense, but I've been really excited about uh, the last several days that he's had, um, being in rhythm and, and doing it from a do your job mentality standpoint um, has been really good. You know, I think AJ coming in, um, obviously played a lot of football. And when you can see when he's comfortable, right? We, we do a lot of things on offense and when he's comfortable, He's been really, really good delivering the ball on time. He has a really quick release. Um, you know, when he's not comfortable, and that's the biggest thing for him. And you go back to even a couple, a couple springs ago when you got new guys in the offense, right? When we had all the new quarter, all the quarterbacks in a new offense, it's a lot, right? So I gotta be, I gotta be sharp mentally, and I gotta know the assignments. When I do that, then it can come out uh, who I am as a player. So when he's doing that, he's really, really good delivering the football on time. Um, and that's what he's just got to continue to grow within the offense. Uh, and that'll be huge for him over the next several, you know, couple months. Um, but I think both of them have done some really good things. We just got to be more consistent um, at that position. And that's going to be the huge thing, right, is who can show that level of consistency, right, all the way from, from top to bottom. Um, Colin Hurley has the talent that we thought, right? When guys come in, you kind of say, okay, what kind of talent level do they have? And, you know, we're, we're right. We're excited about where Colin's at, um, the talent level he has. And I think you've seen some improvements from an accuracy standpoint uh, that are showing up consistently. Um, his big thing is, right, when you're a freshman coming in, I don't care where you're from, what high school you play at, doesn't matter. When you're a freshman coming in, everything's going really, really fast. Um, what's been really positive is even as things are going really fast, he, he's able to see space um, and deliver the football, even if maybe he doesn't quite know what's, exactly what's going on all the time. So he just has some natural things that you really like. Um, and again, he's a really good learner. He's a really, really good learner. He's attacked it the right way this offseason coming into the spring. Um, and I'm excited to see what kind of growth he can have over the next, uh, you know, going into the fall. Um, and that'll be huge for him. The guys that attack it on their own, right, uh, when all of a sudden we got to go on the road, the guys that attack it on their own, those are the ones, right, those are the guys who really make the strides that we need to make. But I'm extremely excited about the core record. we got a ton of talent in there. And play on the field, we'll end up separating, separating those guys. What goes into implementing all these different concepts that y'all want to have in the run game this year after being so sort of inside zone and zone read heavy the last two years? Yeah, well, you know, I think we, we've had some of these other concepts in, um, but I think just probably emphasizing them a little bit more as we went into the off season, right? You got to make a decision on where you're going to hang your hat a little bit, right? And you got to make sure from a script standpoint that um, we get the different thing, different run plays versus the different looks that we need. Um, and I think different, every, every play has a different mentality, right? And I think that's where it starts is understanding the mentality of the play. Um, we've been in inside zone and we have run some gap scheme right here, some counter here, uh, probably not as much maybe necessarily in the game, right? as much as we had in practice. So I think those things, uh, but just the, the guys understanding what we're trying to get out of that play. Um, and then us putting in the, those in the position. But I think it goes all the way back to, as we sat down as an offensive staff and said, okay, 
what do we want to be, right, and how do we want to have different answers um, when defenses are doing different things to us to where they can't take our run game away, where we can put the ball in the belly of the back and let that guy go, go to work. Um, and, and we've come to a few different schemes, and, uh, and the guys have been working hard at it. So it, it's been good, and trying to get, get all the different looks and making sure throughout the spring we can get all the things on tape so we can have a really good summer heading into August. Um, but we'll definitely be multiple. And I think, you know, I'd be remiss to, to say just the teaching ability of, of Brad Davis and Frank Wilson and what, what they're able to get across to the offensive line and the running back position about what we're trying to accomplish with each play and understanding it versus all the different looks ha has been really fun to watch just from a teaching standpoint and obviously into uh, Slade Nagel as well. So it's, it, it's, been, it's been good. You've seen a lot of growth. The first couple of days, right, there were some different things that we had to, to um, work on. Uh, but you're seeing the corrections made, and the, the, the players have been uh, very attentive to what we need to get accomplished and going out and being really purposeful uh, in practice to make sure we get that done. Uh, speaking of Kyron Lacey, um, obviously he played that kind of third role a year ago. When he first got here, he kind of struggled with some drops. Um, how has he taken on being wide receiver one? And when we got to see practice, he made some pretty impressive snags. Yeah, the one over, over the uh, safety was pretty good. That was pretty cool. If we can recreate that a few times, we'll be okay. Uh, Kyron, where I've been so proud of Kyron, I knew Kyron when he was like 15 years old. Um, and watching his, his level of growth um, from, an, a, from a consistency standpoint, accountability, maturity, emotional, um, his growth that way. You know, everybody talks about, hey, I, I, I want to – I want to grow, right? Hey, I know these are my things I need to work on. I, I want to. It's it's not about talking about it. It's about what you do every single day, and the level of consistency that he's shown from really from the bowl game into how he's attacked the weight room to how he's been a leader and holding other players accountable um, and teaching young players what we do and how we do things. Man, that that's what's that's that is the process that then shows up at practice um, and shows up on Saturday. Kyron's going to make plays, right? But the maturity, the ability to use your emotion as your strength, and the ability to be consistent and accountable day in, day out, right? That's going to carry over, and now we see his talent show up every single play. I'm not worried about what he does on those individual routes. It's that process that he's had, and I think, you know, he and, and, and Coach Hankton and, and how they've worked together to, to, what, you know, to, to allow him to grow into that. Uh, has been really, really, really cool to watch. Um, and I think you're seeing it show up now on the practice field. Thanks, guys. Hey, I will tell you, Shelton Sampson has made a ton of strides. I'd, I, I'd be remiss not to say uh, just made some really big plays the last several days. So it's been good.